Hey guys, my name is Jeremy and I'm going to be helping James out with the new vehicle drawing series here on the channel. Now, I first started drawing in perspective about two years ago. Uh, here's some of my earliest studies and then here's some of my more recent work up on the screen. Drawing in perspective isn't something that came easy to me and it's not something that comes easy to anybody. It requires a lot of patience and it's an ability you have to learn how to do. In this series, I'm hoping to kind of distill that learning process so that you guys can learn to draw vehicles in perspective just like this. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out my Gumroad. I'll be posting full length lecture style videos there and I'll be going into some topics that we just don't have time to cover here. They'll be priced pretty affordably and I'll link those in the description as well. All right, with all that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and start the lesson. This lesson will focus on making complex forms using perspective lines. In order to understand this tutorial, you'll already need to be comfortable with the following. Duplicating boxes and rectangles. I call this the duplication technique. Working with two-point perspective and drawing boxes in freehand perspective. If you haven't learned any of this material yet, go ahead and check out some of James's previous videos on perspective. He does a really good job going over all this stuff. You can also find all this material in the early portions of Scott Robertson's How to Draw book. It's pretty easily digestible. Another great resource is drawbox.com. So really the key to drawing vehicles well in perspective is thinking about it in three types of planes. Your first type is going to be called a ground plane and this does exactly what it sounds like. It just lays flat on the ground. It's like the bottom of a box, of a, of a rectangular prism, whatever. And so that's going to look something like this. After that, we're going to add something called a mid plane. Scott Robertson sometimes calls this the side view or the orthographic view. That's because this purple plane here is exactly what it'll look like from the side. So the third type of plane is probably the most important and it's one of the hardest to wrap your mind around if you're just starting out with this stuff. I like to refer to it as a modeling plane and it's basically just a section that runs across the ground plane and the mid plane. So you can see here, if we were to kind of fill in how the mid plane and the ground plane connect, that would give us our modeling plane. Now if we take more modeling planes, we can start to get the full picture of this box. This is how you want to construct just about everything for a while. Once you've been doing this for a little bit, you can kind of break the rules freehanded a little bit, but figuring out how to break forms down into these types of planes is going to be huge for understanding everything in Scott Robertson's book. All right, so let's look at how we would construct one of these boxes using this three plane technique, but instead of having these pre-made colored in planes, we're gonna just use lines and I'm gonna keep the color coordination consistent. So first we've got our ground plane here in blue. Notice I've got the ground plane converging to the left vanishing point and the right vanishing point. This is just basic two point perspective. If you're stuck on this stuff, I suggest going back and reviewing James's video. Next, I wanna put in a mid plane. You have to be very careful to make sure this is centered right in the middle of the ground plane. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, but in the future, in order to make sure that this mid plane is accurately laid down, we're gonna use the box division technique. All right, once we've got our mid plane laid in in purple, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in modeling planes. These are gonna be in red, and just like before, they're gonna act as kind of section lines to show how this form's going to come together. Now, when this is all color coded and we're working with a simple box, it's pretty easy to keep it straightforward and figure out where we are. When you're working with pen on a piece of copy paper, it's gonna be a little bit harder. You're gonna have to train your brain to focus only on the lines that you're working with. It's something that's gonna be really frustrating at first, but over time, you will get better at it. I suggest doing this exercise with simple blocks, simple rectangular prisms over and over again until you get more and more comfortable with having more and more lines in your paper. All right, as we finish this out, we can see that this is going to give us a nice silhouette of a box. This is a pretty convoluted way to make a box, but this technique is going to be really useful in the future. We can use this to make just about any form imaginable. Okay, so I know you guys are watching a vehicle tutorial and we haven't drawn any vehicles yet. 
Let's take those techniques and see how we can transfer them onto actually drawing real world objects. Up on the board we have a few pictures that I took at a local car show. I actually went here for Dynamic Sketching 2, I took the class with Peter Hahn through CGMA. I highly suggest checking it out if you're interested in learning how to draw just about anything quickly and efficiently. So we're going to break down these pictures using those three types of planes. We've got the ground plane, the mid plane, and the modeling planes. Here you can see I've broken down all three of them into a ground plane and a mid plane. This is pretty simple and it's really not even the most efficient way to draw these. I think actually when I drew the truck and the tank, I didn't do this construction at all. I just made like a basic box. However, I want you guys to try and focus on building things with these three planes for right now. It's a little bit more complex, but it has a lot of really useful application later on. Once we've learned this stuff, you can go back and experiment, maybe go watch some of James's old videos where he talks about drawing like Kim Jong-gi and mesh everything together. You're really just building a toolkit here. It's not about finding one way to do everything. You find out all these different ways and you start to combine them together. That's what everybody does. It's building a tool set. Here we see we're going to add in some modeling planes using red. These aren't perfect, but it's just to show the quick idea how I would go about constructing this. This is exactly what you're going to be thinking when you're creating more complex vehicle shapes. Now that we've learned how to think and why it's useful, let's take a look at the exercises that I would like you guys to practice. I'll be walking you through three examples. Each will get progressively more complex and each will have an important lesson to teach you. These are great because you can practice them literally anywhere. Do them in ballpoint on some cheap paper and be prepared to fail. I probably did hundreds of these constructions before I started to feel comfortable with them. So just be patient and keep practicing. Now I'm going to create a setup similar to the one that we did when we made our box. I've got a ground plane, and then here I'm going to drop in a mid plane. This time I measured out using the box division technique. This way I can be absolutely sure that my mid plane is placed directly on the center. Here I make an important modification. Instead of just leaving the mid plane as a flat rectangular shape, I'm going to cut into it and make it into a wedge shape. By doing this, I've effectively modified the side view of my object. This thicker purple line is my new mid plane. This is going to change how I build each one of my modeling planes from here on out. Notice I use the duplication technique to duplicate over one of these modeling planes. This isn't really necessary for this form, but it's a good thing to practice. While you're doing this, you're always going to want to think about convergence. You're always thinking about those vanishing points. These two lines should be fairly parallel. They're converging to some point far in the distance. Once again, I'm paying attention to these lines down here. I'm making sure that they're all parallel. I'm thinking about those vanishing points off in the distance and how these need to go to some vanishing point far, far away.
In this example, we're going to add another layer of complexity. Instead of making a traditional wedge shape, we're going to make one that slopes downward. To do this, all we have to do is modify our mid plane and then build out our modeling planes in exactly the same way. Creating your modeling planes is the most difficult part of doing this exercise. Make sure that you're keeping your lines straight and that you're always staying aware of two-point perspective. If you're having trouble with this, go back and practice drawing freehand boxes. For this last example, I started out exactly the same as the last one. This time, however, I'm going to take my ground plane and modify it in the same way that I modified my mid plane. Building these modeling planes is going to be a little bit more challenging now. We have to pay attention to find the proper line on both the mid plane and the ground plane. I'm going to add one more layer of complexity here by modifying the corner of one of my modeling planes. This time I don't really have an option. I have to use the duplication method to transfer over this modeling plane from the right hand side onto the left hand side of my mid plane. I'm using a slightly more complex method to copy over this corner curve, but really you could probably just eyeball it. If you would like to see more detailed techniques like this and real-time footage in a more lecture format, feel free to check out my Gumroad. And now it's just a simple matter of repeating this process all the way back through the rest of the modeling planes. Finally, I'm going to connect all of these modeling planes and figure out what the overall form of this object is going to be. I'll outline this in a thicker black line. And that's pretty much it. I found these exercises to be the biggest hurdle and most important step in drawing vehicles. If you can master this, you're 70% of the way there. There are more advanced techniques, but the information in this video can be used to do almost any construction. Next, you can try experimenting with modifying your ground plane, mid plane, and modeling planes to construct new and interesting forms from your imagination. This way of thinking should also make studying Scott Robertson's book much easier. Next video, we are going to briefly review ellipses before we start constructing military vehicles using this knowledge. See you guys then.